Hello everyone, let me introduce myself. I am Facundo Carvajal and today I will show you how to interact with smart contracts using React. You must know that the smart contracts are already written. So in this video, you will see only uh, how to interact with smart contracts. So if you want to see all the project and all the code uh, of this to-do list app, uh, you have two options. One, you can see my video of this project, this entire project of a decentralized to-do app, to-do list app. And the other is just go to my GitHub repo and see the code of our smart contracts and then you can see this video and you know every time that i upload a video i also put a resume of this video on my website and if you like this video you can hit the like button and subscribe to my channel too first of all to interact with smart contracts using react we have to use some react hooks like use effect that allows us to execute some code each time that the website reloads. Inside of this hook, we will execute what we will make to get the data from our smart contract. The code that will be here, we will make it on another file to make it cleaner. In this case, I will create a folder called source and inside of it, I will create a JavaScript file called functions. To interact with our smart contracts, we will need to install an extra package called Truffle Contracts. Once we have installed it, we can start to make this file. I will start importing the JSON file that the migrate made us using the Truffle commands. This JSON file has all the data of our smart contract, but in JSON format. I will continue importing Web3. If you don't have Web3 installed, you can install it using this command npm install Web3. Lastly, I will create an instance of the package Truffle Contracts that we installed before. Now we can create some function that we will use in the useEffect hook. Inside of this function, it will execute different functions that we will create. The first function that will be in the load function will be load web tree. In this function, we will use some code that MetaMask provides us to connect Web3 with this wallet. The link to this code will be in the description. Of course, to do that, first you have to have MetaMask installed. If you don't have installed it yet, it's easy. Just go to the official website of MetaMask and install it. Now we have to configure MetaMask to use with Ganesh. First of all, we have to see the test networks. So we go to configurations and then to advanced. And here we have to enable the show test networks. After that, we have to add our own test blockchain that Ganesh provides us. To do that, we go to configurations and then to networks. Add a new network and you have to fill the form with this data. You can check if this data is correct in the app of Ganesh, but normally this data is the same. Now with the MetaMask linked to Ganesh, we can create the next function that we will use to get the current account that the user use to interact with the smart contract. First, I will check that all is going well. So I will print on the console the current account of the user. 
to get this data, we have to call the load function inside of the use effect hook. So we import the load function and we call inside of the use effect hook. We don't want to call the load function every time that the website reloads. So to handle that, we will create some state variables using another React hook called useState. So before we call the load function, we will ask if we want to get the data. If that isn't true, just return. But if that is true, first we have to set the refresh variable to false. And just there, we call the load function. Now, finally, we can try our load account function. Like we see, the console print a promise object. And that it's because I forget to add the await keyword before calling the web tree function. Now, if we refresh the website, we can see now the current address now, like I want to work with Ganesh accounts, we have to add these accounts to MetaMask. In the Ganesh app, we click on the key icon and copy the private key. After that, in MetaMask, we import an account and we paste our private key and finally import the account. I will do the same with another account of Ganesh just to use more than one account to test the smart contracts. Now, if we reload the website, we will see on the console the correct address of our current account. Finally, delete the console log and return the current account. So inside of the load function, we will have to receive it. Here I made a mistake that then I will resolve. I simply shouldn't put the curl braces to receive the account address because I don't return an object but a simple variable. We continue creating a function that gets an instance of the contract. Here we will need our instance of travel contract that we defined before. Start creating a variable that stores the value that returns the contract function. To this function, we will have to pass the JSON file as a parameter. We continue indicating the web trip provider that we are using. After that, we create a variable that stores the content that the function deployed returns. Inside of this function, I want to get all the tasks that the user has. And like do this inside of this function, it will be a lot of code. I will create another function that returns all the tasks. This new function called load tasks, we will receive two parameters, the contract and the address of the current account. First, we get the amount of tasks that the user created using the function that we created in our smart contract called task counts. After that, we create an empty array and then using a for loop we start to get the instance of each unique task of the user. We can get the entire task using our mapping function that we create on our smart contract 2 called tasks. And after that, we push the task inside of the array that we created. Later, we return the array of tasks. Now, inside of the use effect hook to the load function, we add the method then, 
where we will receive the object that the load functions return and here we can interact with the data of our smart contract. We test our code and we will see that I have an error. Maybe you already figured it out, but I spent a good time trying to figure it out. I had called contract to the instance of our smart contract, but I also called contract to the instance of traffic contract. So I have to modify one of them, but I have no better idea to name it with the same name as the variable that stores the value that the function of traffic contract returns. After that, I compile the code and the app doesn't work yet. The problem was that I received the address like it was an object, but was a simple variable. Once I modified that, the app runs with success. And finally, I can read the data of our smart contract and do whatever I want with this data. So I hope that you liked the video and if that is true, you can hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions or just you want to say me something, don't be afraid to do that and just comment below something and I promise that I will respond to you. See you later in my next video and good luck with blockchain development.